The Search for the Scroll of Thoth, or The First Tale of Setna Chemwas, Setna and Neferkapta. Backstory The tale of Chemwas was a real person, the son of Ramses II, from the New Kingdom of the 20th Dynasty, who lived in the 13th century BC. Many centuries later, in the Ptolemaic period, he reappeared as the hero of some fictional stories. This translation is by Lechtheim, Ancient Egyptian Literature. The story is inscribed in Demotic text, a much later Ancient Egyptian script, and abnormal hieratic texts. Footnote. The first two pages of the papyrus text has been lost. Mr. Lechtheim has reconstructed the missing portion of the story as follows. And so begins the tale. Part 1. Prince Hamwas, son of King Ramses II and high priest of Ta at Memphis, was a very learned scribe and magician who spent his time in the study of ancient monuments and books. One day he was told of the existence of a book of magic, written by the god Thoth himself, kept in the tomb of a prince named Neferkapta who had lived in the distant past and was buried somewhere in the vast necropolis of Memphis. After a long search, Prince Hamwas, accompanied by his foster brother Inaros, found the tomb of Neferkapta and entered it. He saw the magic book, which radiated a strong light, and tried to seize it, but the spirits of Neferkapta and his wife Anwer rose up to defend their cherished possession. Now Enwer and her son Marib were not buried in this Memphite tomb, but rather in distant Koptos, where they had lost their lives. But the spirit of Enwer was with her husband at the critical moment, and she now stood before Prince Hamwas and told him how her husband had acquired the magic book and how they had all paid for it with their lives. She begins her story by relating that she and Nanefekapta had been brother and sister and the only children of the pharaoh named Manepta. They had loved each other, and very much, and wanted to marry. But Pharaoh wished to marry his son to the daughter of a general, and his daughter to the son of a general. In her anguish, Anwar had asked the steward of the Pharaoh's palace to plead with Pharaoh in her behalf. The steward had done so, and Pharaoh had become silent and distressed. To the steward's question, why she was distressed, Pharaoh answered, It is you who distresses me. If it so happens that I have only two children, is it right to marry one to the other? I will marry Nanefekapta to the daughter of a general, and I will marry Anwer to the son of another general, so that our family may increase. When the time came for the banquet to be set before Pharaoh, they came for me and took me to the banquet. But my heart was very sad, and I did not have my former looks. Pharaoh said to me, Anwer, was it you who sent me with those foolish words, Let me marry Nanefekapta, my elder brother? I said to him, Let me marry the son of a general, and let him marry the daughter of another general, so that our family may increase. And I laughed, and Pharaoh laughed. When the steward of the palace came, Pharaoh said to him, Hmm, Steward, let Ahwer be taken to the house of Nanefekapta tonight and let all sorts of beautiful things be taken with her. I was taken as a wife to the house of Nanefekapta that night, and Pharaoh sent me a present of silver and gold, and all Pharaoh's household sent me presents. Nanefekapta made holiday with me, and he entertained all Pharaoh's household. He slept with me that night and found me pleasing. He slept with me again and again, and we loved each other. When my time of purification came, I made no more purification. It was reported to Pharaoh, and his heart was very happy. Pharaoh had many things taken out of the treasury and sent me presents of silver, gold, and royal linen, all very beautiful. When my time of bearing came, I bore this boy who you see before you, who was named Marib. He was entered in the register of the House of Life. Now it so happened that my brother Nanefekepta had no occupation on earth but walking on the desert of Memphis, reading the writings that were on the tombs of the pharaohs and on the stellas of the scribes of the House of Life, and on writings that were on other monuments, for his zeal concerning writing was very great. After this there was a procession in honor of Ta, 
and Anaphrakepta went into the temple to worship. As he was walking behind the procession, reading the writings on the shrines of the gods, an old priest saw him and laughed. Nenefekepta said to him, Why are you laughing at me? The priest said, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing because you are reading writings that have no importance for anyone. Now, if you desire to read writings, come to me, and I will have you taken to the place where there is a book belonging to Thoth who wrote with his own hand when he came down following the other gods. Two spells are written within it. When you recite the first spell, you will charm the sky, the earth, the netherworld, the mountains and the waters. You will discover that all the birds of the sky and all the reptiles are saying. You will see the fish of the deep, though there are twenty-one divine cubits of water over them. When you recite the second spell, it will happen that, whether you are in the netherworld or you are in your form on earth, you will see Ra appearing in the sky with his Aeneid and the moon in its form of rising. Nenefekepta said to him, As he, the king, lives, tell me a good thing that you desire, so that I may do it for you, and you send me to the place where this book is. The priest said to Nenefekepta, If you wish to be sent to the place where this book is, you must give me a hundred pieces of silver for my burial, and you must endow me with two priestly stipends tax-free. Nenefekepta called a servant and had the hundred pieces of silver given to the priest. He added the two stipends and had the priest endowed with them tax-free. The priest said to Nenefekepta, Now, the book in question is in the middle of the water of Koptos, in a box of iron. In the box of iron is a box of copper. In a box of copper there is a box of juniper wood. In the box of juniper wood there is a box of ivory and ebony. In the box of ivory and ebony, there's a box of silver. And in the box of silver, there's a box of gold. And in it is the book. There are six miles of serpents, scorpions, and all kinds of reptiles around the box in which is the book. And there is an eternal serpent around the same box. When the priest had thus spoken to Nanifekapta, he did not know where on earth he was. When he came out of the temple, he told me everything that had happened to him. He said to me, Anwar, I will go to Koptos, and I will bring this book quickly back north again. Now I rebuked the priest, saying, May Neith curse you for having told Nanifekepta these dreadful things. You have brought me combat. You have brought me strife. The region of Thebes I now find abhorrent. I did what I could with Nanifekepta to prevent him from going to Koptos, but he did not listen to me. He went to Pharaoh and told Pharaoh everything that the priest had said to him. Pharaoh said to him, What is it you want? Nenefekepta said to him, Let the ship of Pharaoh be given to me with its equipment. I will take Anwer and her boy Marib to the south with me, and I will bring this book without delay. The ship of Pharaoh was given to him with its equipment. We boarded it. We set sail. We arrived at Koptos. It was announced to the priests of Isis of Koptos and the chief priest of Isis. They came down to meet us, quickly to meet Nenefekepta, and their wives came down to meet us as well. We went out from the shore and went into the temple of Isis in Hippocrates. Nenefekepta sent for an ox, a goose, and wine. He made burnt offering and libation before Isis of Koptos and Hippocrates. We were taken to a very beautiful house filled with all good things. Nenefekepta spent four days making holiday with the priests of Isis of Koptos, and the wives of the priests of Isis made holiday with me. When the morning of our fifth day came, Nenefekepta had much pure wax brought to him. He made a boat filled it with rows and sailors. He recited a spell to them. He made them live. He gave them breath. He put them on the water. He filled the ship of Pharaoh with sand. He tied it to the other boat. He went on the board. And I sat above the water of Koptos, saying, I shall learn what happens to him. He said to the rowers, Row me to the place where that book is. They rowed him by night as by day. In three days he reached it. He cast sand before him, and a gap formed in the river. He found six miles of serpents, scorpions, and all kinds of reptiles around the place where the book was. He found an eternal serpent around the same box. 
He recited a spell to the six miles of serpents, scorpions, and all kinds of reptiles were around the box, and did not let them come up. He went to the place where the eternal serpent was. He fought it and killed it. It came to life again and resumed its shape. He fought it again a second time and killed it. It came to life again. He fought it again a third time, cut it in two pieces, and put sand between one piece and the other. It died and no longer resumed its shape. Nenefrekepta went to the place where the box was. He found it was a box of iron. He opened it and found the box of copper. He opened it and found the box of juniper wood. He opened it and found the box of ivory and ebony. He opened it and found the box of silver. He opened it and found the box of gold. He opened it and found the book in it. He brought the book back up from the box of gold. He recited a spell from it. He charmed the sky, the earth, and the netherworld, and the mountains, and the waters. He discovered what all the birds of the sky, and the fish of the deep, and the beasts of the deserts were saying. He recited another spell. He saw Ra appearing in the sky with the Aeneid, and the moon rising, and the stars in their forms. He saw the fish of the deep, though they were twenty-one divine cubits of water, over them. He recited a spell to the water. He made it resume its form. He went on board. He said to the rowers, Row me back to the place I came from. They rowed him by night as by day. He reached me at the place where I was. He found me sitting above the water of Koptos, not having drunk nor eaten nor having done anything on earth, and looking like a person who has reached the good house. I said to Nenefekepta, Welcome back. Let me see this book for which we have taken these great pains. He put the book into my hand. I recited one spell from it. I charmed the sky, the earth, the netherworld, the mountains, the waters. I discovered what all the birds of the sky and the fish of the deep and the beasts were saying. I recited another spell. I saw Ra appearing in the sky with his Aeneid. I saw the moon rising and the stars of the sky in their forms. I saw the fish of the deep, though there were twenty-one divine cubits of water over them. As I could not write... I mean, compared with Nenefekepta, my brother, who was a good scribe and a very wise man. He had a sheet of new papyrus brought to him. He wrote on it every word that was in the book before him. He soaked it in beer. He dissolved it in water. When he knew it was dissolved, he drank it and knew what had been in it. We returned to Koptos that same day and made holiday before Isis of Koptos and Hippocrates. We went on board and we traveled north we reached a point of six miles north of Koptos. Now, Thoth had found out everything that had happened to Nenefekepta regarding the book, and Thoth hastened to report it to Ra, and said, Learn of my right and my case against Nenefekepta, the son of Pharaoh Merepta. He went to my storehouse, he plundered it, he seized my box with my document, he killed my guardian who was watching over it. He was told, He is yours, together with every person belonging to him. They sent a divine power from heaven, saying, Do not allow Nenefekepta and any person belonging to him to get to Memphis safely. At a certain moment, the boy Marib came out from under the awning of the pharaoh's ship, fell into the water, and drowned. All the people on board cried out. Nenefekepta came out from his tent, recited a spell to him, and made him rise up though there were twenty-one divine cubits of water over him. He recited a spell to his dead son and made him relate to him everything that had happened to him and the nature of the accusation that Thoth had made before Ra. We returned to Koptos with him. We had him taken to the good house. We had him tended. We had him embalmed like a prince, an important person. We laid him to rest in his coffin in the desert of Koptos. Nenefekepta, my brother, said, let us go north. Let us not delay, lest Pharaoh hear the things that we have happened to us, and his heart become sad because of them. We went on board, and we went north without delay. Now, six miles north of Koptos, at the place where the boy Marib had fallen into the river, I came out from under the awning of the Pharaoh's ship. I fell into the river and drowned. All the people on board cried out and told Nenefekepta, he came out from the tent of the pharaoh's ship, recited a spell to me, and made me rise up. 
though there were twenty-one divine cubits of water over me. He had me brought up, recited a spell to me. Though I was dead, he made me relate to him everything that had happened to me, and the nature of the accusation that Thoth made before Ra. He returned to Koptos with me. He had me taken to the good house. He had me tended. He had me embalmed in the manner of a prince and every important person. He laid me to rest in the tomb in which the boy Marie was resting. He went on board. He went north without delay. Six miles north of Koptos, at the place where we had fallen into the river, he spoke to his heart, saying, Could I go to Koptos and dwell there also? If I go to Memphis now and Pharaoh asks me about his children, what shall I say to him? Can I say to him, I took your children to the region of Thebes, I killed them and stayed alive? I have come to Memphis, yet alive? He sent for a scarf of royal linen belonging to him and made it into a bandage. He bound the book, placed it on his body, and made it fast. Nenefekepta came out from under the awning of the pharaoh's ship, fell into the water, and drowned. All the people on board cried out, saying, Great woe, sad woe, will he return, the good scribe, the learned man whose like has never been seen. Pharaoh's ship sailed north, no man on earth knowing where Nenefekepta was. They reached Memphis and sent word to Pharaoh. Pharaoh came down to meet the Pharaoh's ship. He wore mourning, and all the people of Memphis wore mourning, including the priests of Ta, the chief priest of Ta, the council, and all of Pharaoh's household. Then they saw Nenefekepta holding on to the rudders of Pharaoh's ship through his craft of a good scribe. They brought him up and saw the book on his body. Pharaoh said, Let this book that is on his body be hidden. Then said the council of Pharaoh and the priests of Ta and their chief priest of Ta to Pharaoh, Our great Lord, O oh, may he have the lifetime of Ra. Nenefekepta was a good scribe and a very good learned man. Pharaoh had then given him entry into the good house on the sixteenth day, wrapping on the thirty-fifth day, burial on the seventieth day, and they laid him to rest in his coffin in his resting place. These are the evil things that befell us on the account of this book in which you say, Let it be given to me. You have no claim to it, whereas our lives on earth were taken on account of it. Part 2 Setne takes the book. Setne said to Ahwer, Let me have this book that I see between you and Nenefekepta, or else I will take it by force. Nenefekepta rose from the bier and said, Are you Setne, to whom this woman has told these dire things, and you have not accepted them? The said book, you will be able to seize it through the power of a good scribe, or through skill in playing draughts with me. Let the two of us play draughts for it, said Setna. I am ready. They put before them the game board with its pieces, and they both played. Nenefekepta won one game from Setna. He recited a spell to him, struck his head with the game board, and that was before him, and made him sink into the ground as far as his legs. He did the same with the second game. He won it from Setna, and made him sink into the ground as far as his phallus. He did the same with the third game, and made him sink into the ground as far as his ears. After this, Setna was in straits at the hands of Nenefekepta. Setna called to his foster brother Inaros, saying, Quickly, go up to the earth and tell Pharaoh everything that has happened to me, and bring the amulets of my father Ta and my books of sorcery. Inaros quickly went up to the earth and told Pharaoh everything that had happened to Setna. Pharaoh said, Take him to the amulets of his father Ta and his books of sorcery. Inaros quickly went down into the tomb. He put the amulets on the body of Setna, and he jumped up in that very moment. Setna stretched out his hand for the book and seized it. Then, as Setna came up from the tomb, light went before him. Darkness went behind him, and Ahwer wept after him, saying, Hail, O darkness! Farewell, O light! Everything that was in the tomb has departed. Nenefekepta said to Ahwer, Let your heart not grieve. I will not make him bring this book back here with a forked stick in his hand and a lighted brazier on his head. Setna came up from the tomb 
and made it fast behind him, as it had been. Setna went before Pharaoh and related to him the things that had happened to him on account of the book. Pharaoh said to Setna, Take this book back to the tomb of Nanefekepta like a wise man, or else he will make you take it back with a forked stick in your hand and a lighted brazier on your head. Setna did not listen to the Pharaoh. Then Setna had no occupation on earth but to unroll the book and read it to everyone. Part 3 Setna and Tabubu After this, it happened one day that Setna was strolling in the forecourt of the temple of Ta. Then he saw a woman who was very beautiful, there being no other woman like her in appearance. She was beautiful and wore many golden jewels, and maidservants walked behind her as well as two men servants belonging to her household. The moment Setna saw her, he did not know where on earth he was. He called his manservant, saying, Hasten to the place where this woman is, and find out what her position is. The manservant quickly went to the place where the woman was. He called to the maidservant who was following her, and asked her, saying, What woman is this? She told him, It is Tabubu, the daughter of the prophet of Bastet, mistress of Ahtaui. She has come here to worship Ta, the great god. The servant returned to Setna and related to him every word she had said to him. Setna said to the servant, Go, say to the maid, It is Setna Chemwas, the son of the pharaoh Usamare, who has sent me to say, I will give you ten pieces of gold. Spend an hour with me, or do you have a complaint of wrongdoing? I will have it settled for you. I will have you taken to a hidden place where no one on earth shall find you. The servant returned to the place where Tabubu was. He called her maid and told her. She cried out as if what he had said was an insult. Tabubu said to the servant, Stop talking to this foolish maid. Come and speak with me. The servant quickly went to where Tabubu was and said to her, I'll give you ten pieces of gold. Spend an hour with Set Nechemwas, the son of Pharaoh Usamare. If you have a complaint of wrongdoing, he will have it settled for you. He will take you to a hidden place where no one on earth shall find you. Then Tabubu said, Go tell Setna, I am of a priestly rank. I am not a low person. If you desire to do what you wish with me, you must come to Bubastis, to my home. It is furnished with everything, and you shall do what you wish with me, without anyone on earth finding me, and without my acting like a low woman of the street. The servant returned to Setna and told him everything she had said to him. He said, That suits me. Everyone around Setna was indignant. Now Setna had a boat brought to him. He went on board and hastened it to Bubastis. When he came to the west of the suburb, he found a very lofty house that had a wall around it, a garden on its north, and a seat at its door. Setna asked, Whose house is this? They told him, It is the house of Tabubu. Setna went inside the wall. While he turned his face to the storehouse in the garden, they announced him to Tabubu. She came down, took Setna's hand, and said to him, By the welfare of the house of the prophet of Bastet, mistress of Akhtaui, which you have reached, it will please me greatly if you will take the trouble to come up with me. Setna walked up the stairs of the house with Tabubu. He found the upper story of the house swept and adored its floors adorned with real lapis lazuli and real turquoise. Many couches were in it, spread with royal linen, and many golden cups were on the table. A golden cup was filled with wine and put inside Setna's hand. She said to him, May it please you to eat something? He said to her, I could not do that. Incense was put on the brazier. Ointment was brought to him, of the kind provided for Pharaoh. Setna made holiday with Tabubu, never having seen anyone like her before. Setna said to Tabubu, Let us accomplish what we have come here for. She said to him, You will return to your house in which you live. I am of priestly rank. I am not a low person. If you desire to do what you wish with me, you must make for me the deed of maintenance and compensation and money for everything. All good things belong to you. He said to her, Send for the school teacher. He was brought at once. He made for her a deed of maintenance and of compensation and money for everything.
all good things belonging to him. At this moment, one came to announce to Setna, Your children are below. He said, Let them be brought up. Tabubu rose and put on a garment of royal linen. Setna saw all her limbs through it, and his desire became even greater than it had been before. Setna said, Tabubu, let me accomplish what I have come here for. She said to him, You will return to your house in which you live. I am of priestly rank. I am not a low person. If you desire to do what you wish with me, you must make your children subscribe to my deed. Do not leave them to contend with my children over your property. He had his children brought and made them subscribe to the deed. Setna said to Tabubu, Let me accomplish what I have come for. She said to him, You will return to your house in which you live. I am of priestly rank. I am not a low person. If you desire to do what you wish with me, you must have your children killed. Do not leave them to contend with my children over your property. Setna said, Let the abomination that came into your head be done to them. She had his children killed before him. She had them thrown down from the window to the dogs and cats. They ate their flesh, and he heard them as he drank with Tabubu. Setna said to Tabubu, Let us accomplish what we have come here for. All the things that you have said, I have done them all for you. She said to him, Come now to the storehouse. Setna went to the storehouse. He lay down on a couch of ivory and ebony, his wish about to be fulfilled. Tabubu lay down beside Setna. He stretched out his hand to touch her, and she opened her mouth wide in a loud cry. Setna awoke in a state of great heat, his phallus in a... And there were no clothes on him at all. At this moment, Setna saw a noble person born in a litter, with many men running beside him. He had the likeness of Pharaoh. Setna was about to rise, but could not rise for the shame because he had no clothes on. Pharaoh said, Setna, what is this state that you are in? He said, It is Nanefekapta who had done this all to me. Pharaoh said, Go to Memphis. Your children want you. They stand in their rank before Pharaoh. Setna said to the Pharaoh, My great lord, Oh, may he have lifetime of Ra. How can I go to Memphis with no clothes on at all? Pharaoh called to a servant who was standing by and made him give clothes to Setna. Pharaoh said, Setna, go to Memphis. Your children are alive. They stand in their rank before Pharaoh. Part 4. Setna Returns the Book When Setna came to Memphis, he embraced his children, for he found them alive. Pharaoh said to Setna, Was it a state of drunkenness that you were in before? Setna related everything that had happened with Tabubu and Nanefekapta. Pharaoh said, Setna, I did what I could with you before, saying, They will kill you if you do not take this book back to the place you took it from. You have not listened to me until now. Take this book back to Nanefekapta with a forked stick in your hand and a lighted brazier on your head. When Setna came out from before Pharaoh, there was a forked stick in his hand and a lighted brazier on his head. He went down into the tomb in which Nanefekepta was. Ahur said to him, Setna, it is the great god Ta who has brought you back safely. Nanefekepta laughed, saying, It is what I told you before. Setna greeted Nanefekepta, and he found one could say that Ra was in the whole tomb. Ahwer and Nanefekepta greeted Setna warmly. Setna said, Nanefekepta, is there any matter which is shameful? Nanefekepta said, Setna, you know that Ahwer and her son Merib are in Koptos. Here in this tomb they are through the craft of good scribe. Let it be asked of you to undertake the task of going to Koptos and bringing them here. When Setna had come up from the tomb, he went before Ptah and related to the Pharaoh everything that Nanefekepta had said to him. And Pharaoh said, Setna, go to Koptos, bring Ahwer and her son Merib. He said to Pharaoh, Let the ship of Pharaoh and its equipment be given to me. The ship of Pharaoh and its equipment were given to him. He went on board, he set sail, he reached Koptos without delay. 
It was announced to the priests of Isis of Koptos and the chief priest of Isis. They came down to meet him. They conducted him to the shore. Now he went up from it. He went to the temple of Isis of Koptos and Hippocrates. He sent for an ox, a goose, and wine, and made burnt offerings and libations before Isis of Koptos and Hippocrates. He went to the desert of Koptos with the priests of Isis and the chief priests of Isis. They spent three days and three nights searching in all the tombs on the desert of Koptos, turning over the stellas of the scribes at the house of life, and reading the inscriptions on them. They did not find the resting place in which Ahur and her son were. When Nenefekepta found that they did not find the resting place of Ahur and her son Merib, he rose up as an old man, a very aged priest, and came to meet Setna. When Setna saw him, he said to the old man, You have the appearance of a man of great age. Do you know the resting place in which Ahur and her son Merib are? The old man said to Setna, My great-grandfather said to my grandfather, The resting place of Ahur and her son Merib is at a south corner of the house of the chief of police. Setna said to the old man, Perhaps there is some wrong that the chief of police did to you on account of which you are trying to have his house torn down? The old man said to Setna, Have a watch set over me, and let the house of the chief of police be demolished. If they do not find Ahwer and her son Merib under the south corner of his house, let the punishment be done to me. They set a watch over the old man, and they found the resting place of Ahwer and her son Merib under the south corner of the house of the chief of police. Setna let the two noble persons enter into the pharaoh's ship. He had the house of the chief of police built as it had been before. Nenefekepta let Setna learn the fact that it was he who had come to Koptos, to let them find the resting place of which Ahwer and her son Merib were. Setna went on board a pharaoh's ship. He went north without delay and he reached Memphis with all the people who were with him. When it was announced before Pharaoh, he came down to meet the ship of Pharaoh, he let the noble persons enter into the tomb in which Nenefekepta was. He had it closed over them altogether. The End The Colophon of the Scribe This is a complete text, a tale of Setna Hemwas and Nenefekepta and his wife, Ahwar, and her son Marib. It was copied by, unknown, in year 15, first month of winter.